we haven't heard from my next guest in quite some time. Apparently, the Magambo Guru bunker was struck by a direct hit from the Gold Cartel's missile launcher last year. But we understand he and the missus have recovered from the salvo, and he's ready to continue the fight. Welcome back, Richard. Why, thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here. You know, Richard, I understand that you call Tampa Bay, Florida home. Is, is that correct? That is correct. Well, you know, I've also read reports that instead of toasters, Recently, banks started giving away foreclosed homes with new accounts. <laughs> Any credibility to that story? <laughs> well, I, I actually, I wouldn't be surprised, but I haven't heard of it yet. Well, you know, I've been reading some of your uh, latest reports, and apparently the Magambo is quite concerned with all this government money spending and printing Low interest rates around the world. There was a time when dropping interest rates from five and a quarter percent down to practically zero would have a very stimulative effect on the economy. But, you know, in reality, unemployment just reached 9.4 percent. Katie, bar the doors, they're talking 11 percent by as soon as next year. What's going on? got guys like Maskew uh, advocating a negative 6% Fed funds rate, which you can only get by having a very positive inflation rate. So he's look, he's recommending that the Federal Reserve actually flood the economy with so much money that it produces 6% inflation while he holds Fed funds rate at zero. I can't help but question at what point our creditors, if you will, i.e., the Bank of China and the Bank of Japan and a few others out there who have gobbled up these U.S. bonds for so long. At some point, Richard, aren't they going to wake up and say, there's a scam going on here? (laughs) There's a lot of things that they can use all that debt as an extortion tool, and they can get a lot of nuclear technology. They can get us to shut up about Taiwan. Uh, There's a lot of things that they can get from uh, supercomputers, things that they would not ordinarily be able to get on the world market. They can basically now bleed us, drive all that stuff, and that is when they will suddenly decide, uh, we got everything we need, so now we're out of here. They're going to use it to buy American farmland, which is not all that smart of an idea, because we can merely pass a law that foreigners can't own American land. And so, uh, you know, I I don't know if that's really the way they want. Well, you know, eventually some of this money is going to have to find its way into the markets. You just can't print money endlessly and keep interest rates artificially low without having some type of explosive move in real assets, i.e. commodities. Well, let's look back at exactly what happened every other time in the last 4,500 years of governments trying to spend more money than they can get with taxes. Like, they're just creating more and more money. It ends badly, very badly, and it shows up in prices. And the prices is that people can't pay. And the people get tired of hearing their children crying from hunger, and they're tired of being hungry themselves. And there's all kinds of social upheaval, and that's the big problem. Yeah, you're making me hungry. (laughs) It is about time for some pizza. Order some Domino's. Okay. So so I guess the real question then, where ultimately do we head with the king of currencies, the only real money out there, as so many folks refer to it, and that's the yellow metal. That is a very good question. But, you know, it's really hard to tell if people are willing to except paper gold instead of the actual physical bullion, it could go on for years and years and years more. There's no upper limit, really, to except to the limit of gullibility of people that they think this promise of gold is the same thing as the bullion in hand. That's when they wake up. But in the meantime, they're putting all the money into ETFs and all kinds of other promises. So, you know, I just don't know. There's, there's something to be said for China actually surreptitiously acquiring gold to have a future plan to institute a gold standard for their money, which would immediately they would take over the economic world. There's something to be said for that, too. So it's to their advantage to use their hoard of government securities to encourage the United States to keep the price of gold down so they can acquire all this gold on the cheap. The one lesson in all of history. Whenever your government does this, start loading up on gold right now. Where are all our history majors? Where are all these college professors with their pipes in their mouths and their tweed coats with their leather patches on the elbows? Who must know this stuff? Magambo, I bet you own a tweed jacket with patches on the elbows. 
<laughs> all right. Well, then the Magambo would probably agree with this statement. Well, frankly, we're all doomed. You know, I've heard that. Where did you hear that from? <laughs> For folks that'd like to find out more about your commentary. Dailyreckoning.com. Of course, I have to give a caveat that anybody that reads my stuff has something very wrong with it. <laughs> and Richard, are they still giving the uh, free tours of the Magambo Bunker? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, you step right over that line right there. I'll give you a free. <laughs> You're still offering a box of Dunkin' Donuts at the end of the tour? No, I had to cut that out. Well, it's a real pleasure, and we will uh, have you back soon. Thank you very much for having us. It's been a wonderful being here. Bye. Bye.